Hi everyone, finally getting around to uh, showing uh, some details about this uh, little pedal board that I put together. Um, I have it up on the desk now just so you can see what's happening. It's uh, hooked up to the filter. And what I did was, from this to the filter, just using a standard readily available dual RCA to uh, eighth inch uh, tip ring sleeve type stereo connector. Uh, one I'm using for uh, audio, the other I'm using for trigger. Uh, these are really easy to get, that's why I went with this. You could actually have this on both ends, but I just happened to have these two RCA jacks to mount on this little plate. And I had this already, so I wanted something long enough, obviously, because this way the uh, filter controls are up on the desk for easy access, and this can be down on the floor. And obviously, it's fun, like if, if you play guitar, uh, you can uh, play your guitar while you're doing fundamental root notes through the pentatonic scale. It's a lot of fun. I'll, I'll do a demonstration of that in another video. Um, let's see, let's put this back in. Well, actually, before I even put this in, because... I can go. I can go through the uh, actual functions, but I want to show the, the build construction. This is just uh, 12 volt wall work going into the uh, Arduino board there, and uh, this is just a piece of uh, of, of um, what do you call it? Uh, clipboard material from a Dollar Tree store. Um, I have a blank floating around here. Yeah, doesn't matter. Um, just hold, these are actually the original holes for the clip, which you, you drill the rivet out and remove the clip, and then you drill the holes to mount the uh, the keys, aka pedals, which in this case are just strips of PCB material. You, you cut them into a long strip and then just chop them into the little pieces. These are about three inches by a little over half. Of course, that's not super critical. I think it's three inches by five eighths. I believe it ended up being. And as far as the mounts, these are just uh, number six screws. I actually have six by thirty-two. These are half inch with four washers as a standoff. As you can see, the nuts on the bottom. Let me flip this over. Uh, these, these, the nuts on the bottom, and the screw comes through with the four washers as a standoff. Of course, if you have standoffs, you can use a standoff. But it turns out that four number six washers uh, were just the right size. The other contacts are these are half inch screws. These are uh, 3 8 inch and these are for the contacts which is just simply the screw the nut and one washer and as you can see underneath this is the ground wire where the pins where it gets ground all the common ground just routed around and underneath each washer clamped down under the washer so that what you end up with is the stack of washers here is a standoff, and then one screw over here for the contact, as such. And then underneath each of these, underneath each little stack of washer, is where you just pinch the wire underneath, and then running up to the Arduino. And on this particular one, I've gone with, uh, you'll see in the, uh, the schematic, which is linked below, and the code linked below, I've gone through, I've gone with uh, the, the five notes are actually going to A1 through A5, which is conveniently on this side of the Arduino, so it routes right down and fans out to these. Um, the output, these two resistors are shown in the schematic. These are actually the, uh, just the signal dropping resistors to bring the 5 volt uh, digital level down to a more suitable audio level. These are coming from, uh, it, it's all of course shown in the schematic that's linked. Um, that all comes from the top side and the, this is the mute switch to stop the oscillator because this, 
This is now free running. Once you press the note, it continues. And what gives it the attack decay, of course, is in the filter. But if you're using the standalone, just as a uh, kind of a, a, a root note drone, of where you can change the pitch with your foot, uh, it will just keep going. So I, I gave the option to have a switch to press, and it stops it. Um, the uh, and of course this cycles through five uh, five different keys, each one you know starting on a new root, root note. Let me hook this back up, and we'll uh, have a closer look at the uh, just the functionality of the keys. Uh, in the uh, in the code, I do have it labeled. Uh, it I've I've done a pretty good job of of putting notes into the uh, the code to describe what's going on. You'll see every time you press this, it cycles to a different set of five notes. Each one is a pentatonic scale, but each one starts with a different root note. Now let me uh, hook this back up. Once again, this would normally be on the floor, but I'm going to keep it up here for this demo purposes right now. And this is... Uh, oh, it, by the way, when I rigged up with this, I had a jack, uh, you know, a, a three-conductor stereotype uh, audio jack that I fits right in with the proper spacing for this, so that's kind of nice. Someday I'll build this onto a solder proto board. Someday. And... Uh, so, because I wanted to get the trigger, obviously the trigger, the audio comes out of here, but also the trigger needed to get up to here. And I didn't want to run a, uh, a separate cable, so I just ran with, with this type of setup. The tip is audio, the uh, sleeve, as they call it, is, um, is ground, and then it gave me the ring. Because it's not stereo, which normally would be left and right for the tip and ring. Uh, a tip and ring. So I made the ring trigger. It was, it was very handy, and it worked great. Plug this back in. I have right, red set up for audio, white for trigger. Doesn't matter, obviously. Makes no difference. Plug this in. So the audio is coming out, feeding into the filter. The trigger is being routed up into the attack decay circuit. This is the same filter as before, but so you're not confused, anybody who's watched other videos, um, I've actually swapped this half and this half. This being the filter with the um, uh, cutoff start frequency and resonance, and this being the envelope generator, attack decay generator with the attack decay. This is just the LFO, which is essentially a separate little circuit. They used to be the other way, and I just simply swapped them around. It made it easier for me to have in and out access of my input and output. But it makes no difference. I didn't even have to, I didn't rewire these two boards come apart. I just simply separated them, brought them around, and, you know, uh, moved the jumpers for power and ground, so both buses have that. And then the only connection um, between the two boards, not counting, is this trigger, which is actually only from here. I could have, you know, I could run it right here with a separate wire, which I had been doing. And the only connection is the, um, the control voltage coming out of the buffer into the input of the VCF. So that's all I've done, swap them around. Um, anyhow, let's uh, plug this back in. And we'll just, uh, uh, let's see, volume. Here we are. As I showed in that early, really fast video, that's the first scale. And of course, you still have full control of, of everything with the filter you would have before. I, I, the one, the, the low register, I started in E because my intention was to accompany guitar and a lot of things are in E. I, I have to look what it, it ends up being uh, E. Um, well, you can see in the code. I haven't labeled what each one is. I know this is a pentatonic scale in E. Then uh, it might be D and then C. I forget. You have to look. Um, these little bags are available at Home Depot 
for a dollar and change. It, each one comes with eight. The nuts comes with the nuts and the screws. Oh, you can hear actually it's free running right now a little bit. There's a lot of ambient light shining on the LDR uh, combination, <laughs> but you can stop it with that. Uh, these are from Home Depot, readily available. 632 by 3 8 for the contacts and 632 by 1 half for the taller ones and a bag of uh, 30 number 6 uh, washers for, that stack up for standoffs as you can see and of course then underneath uh, where, the, where the grounds run that's where the uh, the ground just comes off of the board here underneath and then loops around and the, the washers are important so when you when you clamp down on the wire it's you're not just twisting the wire with with the actual uh, nut itself it's the, the washer is there which kind of gives a nice uh, gentle push onto the connection um, let's see what else did I want to mention about this setup um, uh, just just a point of interest this was actually going to be for a keyboard uh, I actually have 18 of these where it was going to be, you know, a full octave and a half uh, spaced properly for fingers and then, you know, sharps and flats up. Well, these would be closer. I may end up doing that eventually, um, but for now I liked having something where I could just have it on the floor. And then, of course, it, you know, look, Ma, no hands, right? <laughs> So, so that, and then, you know, while I'm playing guitar or bass or another synth, what have you, um, it, it's right there ready to go. It's not, it's not designed to be like super robust, you know, you're not going to bring this to a gig with you. Well, I guess you could, but you got to be careful with it. It could be built up to be more robust, I suppose, but these keys and, and the hardware from Home Depot, the board itself from, uh, from a Dollar Tree, you know, it was very inexpensive and easy to throw together. And you don't need the filter. If you run the audio straight out and, and don't even use the trigger, it essentially ends up being a free running uh, oscillator, which um, I, I can uh, demonstrate that just by, uh, let me, let me uh, I could bypass the filter if I have my, uh, bear with me. Handy dandy wires and meters and o scopes. Oh my! See what I have here. I think I'm looking for this one, or is it this one? Um, I believe it's no. Ah, it's. This one, correct? That. Yeah, this. I have a whole bunch of. It's good to have like all kinds of little adapters and 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 cables to do various things. So let's see. Let's let's figure this out. Okay. Now watch this. What we're going to do is run. This, let's just pretend you didn't want to build the filter of, and all you wanted to do was throw something like this together. No filter. And remember, this is, the, the code's different from the keyboard. It run the other one, if you release the key, it stops. This one, if you release the key, it keeps going, which is great for accompaniment. I actually have, in my, in in code, I can use another switch and turn that option on and off. But for now, it's just using the filter as the attack decay. Um, but right now, let's just go straight into this is just this is just the little amp, my little computer speakers look great, and we can just go straight into. Um, oh, I remember what I wanted to do. If I go, hang on, bear with me. 
No, I know what I was going to do. Out of this one. This is the one I wanted. Okay. That's uh, RCA to 8th inch. Boom. Now. Hopefully everything's still in the frame. This runs constant. Now, of course, you could be playing chords or lead while this is running, uh, while you, or you're doing your other keyboard, which is kind of cool. Then the pentatonic, of course, is very useful, but it's just running constantly now. So with your foot, you just press that, and you can and you can mute it. Uh, just to run through the. Uh, Matter, as a matter of fact, when you cycle through the root note, each new root note starts on the next key and goes up higher than that. And once again, convenient button. Like, shut up. Yay. Okay, so uh, let's see. That's it for now. I wanted to get that up there. And, and like I said, a quick explanation of how easy this is to build. Oh, by the way, I did want to mention, this was originally, I had it set up for six notes, so the pentatonic plus the higher, you know, the, the, the octave of the original root note, uh, that's what these other holes were there for. When they were this close, and I was trying to press them with my feet, with my foot, it was too hard. It was it was too hard to not bump the other one, so I said, "All I'm going to get out of this length of board." And the reason I use this length is because it's readily available piece of clipboard material. Obviously, you could make it longer, you know, but for something just to throw together with this board, pieces of PCB material cut the size, hardware from Home Depot, just and as I said, I ran the wires. The, the keys are all. The analog from this side, the except for these two, which come from the top, it's, in, it's listed in the code, and that made it like easy to wire this way down to here, these up to here, and the grounds underneath. And one other important thing, these thick press and stick standoffs, Home Depot. It was, it was like I had, I'm looking around and say, hey, I can use that. I can use this. I can use that. So, okay, I'm going to end it there. I'll probably do a video of, uh, of just using this on the floor while I jam with either another keyboard or my guitar just for fun. So you can you know, get a feel of, because when, when you have the actual synth uh, blending with something else, it really sounds cool. So anyhow, uh, have a great day and uh, thanks for watching.